Mr. Pre President, Director Nesbitt, Commissioners Jess Johnson, Wyoming Wildlife Federation. I'm their government affairs director. And I wanna make sure that I touch on a couple of things. While I think we were all horrified by the acts of an individual that doesn't represent Wyoming, nor mm -hmm. Wyoming values or people, I wanna take this opportunity to shed a little light on some education things. The world is watching. So I'm gonna tell you a couple of things that you all know. Hopefully the world will also start to hear. Statutory authority. I'm a lobbyist for the Wyoming Wildlife Federation. I do a lot of work at the state legislature and a lot of my job is to know the right person to come to talk to when I have frustrations about how things are going. I understand that your guys' hands are tied. This is not it happened outside of the trophy zone. The trophy zone being where you and your scientists and your researchers have done an excellent job of managing wolves in the state. They've had a healthy and viable population. Had this been perpetrated inside the trophy zone, the fines would have been different. We could have done something, but because it was outside and it's under the purview of the Department of Agriculture, that is also set in statute. This is legislative. I'm trying to make sure that we come to the right place and express the frustrations in the right way. So the world that is listening, don't burn yourself out on frustrations here, telling to people who manage our wildlife and have built their careers, the scientists, the researchers, the managers, built their careers on making sure that we have these animals here. That's what you guys manage. Thank you for that. Thank you for having the game warden that did everything they could do under statute including a $250 fine, which was the highest fine that we could find a loophole for under statute right now. So I hear this emotion in this room and I feel this when I want to make sure it goes to the right place and it goes somewhere where it can be changed and where it can be done. Because oftentimes I hear a pour out here of emotion and then I show up at a legislative committee meeting and no one is in the room. Thank you. Just on time. Thank you, Jess. Christine Combs. <laughs> President Lambert. Oh, sorry. Hi. <laughs> yes, I'm Kristen Combs, Executive Director from Wyoming Wildlife Advocates. Um, President Labig, Commissioners, Director Nesvik, thank you for the opportunity to speak today on this issue that has become a flashpoint for change in wildlife management in America. I want to start off by reminding you that the world is watching. The horrific cruelty that was allowed to occur with little to no consequence has affected people in ways they can't even articulate. People the world over are outraged, saddened, and stunned that something of this nature could happen in our mon modern society. You stated yesterday in a press release that Wyoming is the gold standard of wildlife management. However, how can what happened occur in a state that has the gold standard of wildlife management? This is not a one-time event by a sick individual. This is a more systemic problem of Wyoming's laws and lack of protections and ethical considerations that have failed to protect all wildlife. In most of Wyoming, wolves aren't even considered wildlife. In all of the state, coyotes, jackrabbits, porcupines, red fox, skunks, and stray cats are not considered wildlife at all. They are given the status of predator, which means that they have no ethical considerations given to them ever. There is no time of the year where predators must be killed in an ethical manner. And in fact, just last year, the legislature made it even easier to kill these species by allowing night hunting with artificial lighting, night vision, and infrared light. This sends a message that some wildlife is not worthy of ethical treatment. Those animals are so unworthy of ethical treatment that you allow them to be killed by setting fire to dens with pubs, run over by snowmobiles, and killed for contests where prizes and money is awarded. That is not wildlife management, and it's not hunting. Torture has no place in any kind of wildlife management. So please share with us how a system that permits these things to occur is the gold standard of wildlife management. And even when it comes to game animals, Wyoming is still falling short of being an exemplary example of fighting of wildlife man management. Wyoming has some of the sickest deer and elk in the nation. The legislature is fighting over how to reduce elk populations because of the havoc they're wreaking on ranches. And you still feed wildlife when every piece of evidence says not to. So how can you say that Wyoming is the model state for wildlife management? Back to the incident. Well, okay. I'll send you my, the rest of my comments, please. Okay. By Thank email. You. Yep. Sylvia Bagdonis. Hi, director Hi. and president and commission. I appreciate this opportunity to talk to you. I also am concerned with the latest, latest incident and particularly because I think that you set the standards and norms for how people should conduct themselves 
And again, I'm looking at uh, the generations coming up, and they're looking to you for leadership. Uh, Commissioner Brokoff talked about how young people are really focused on using social media to get their information. I hope that you might find a way to add some information that young people have access to that would clarify uh, the position in Wyoming on ethical wildlife treatment and hunting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Lisa Robertson. Welcome again, Lisa. It's my favorite place. <laughs> um, so I'm Lisa Robertson again with Wyoming and Trapped and I had a, a page prepared to give you, but um, after listening to Kristen and Sylvia, I just decided to point out a couple things. You know, this is about, to me, a wolf in Wyoming, and Wyoming Untrapped was what's called Wyoming Wolves Untrapped, and there was a reason for that, because wolves were going to be delisted in Wyoming, and they were going to be in the predator zone in 85% of the state, and um, it was shocking, so we set up a gotta hurry <laughs> um but anyway um i just have a couple questions or a couple things i want to point out to you that i wish we would do differently about this whole thing it's been traumatic really traumatic for all of us and it's become where any kind of words of of kindness make you tear up because you see the ugliness that's going on out there and we know it's going on everywhere um i, I would recommend that that you don't stay quiet during incidents like this, that blood boiling. And that's really what escalated this whole thing of all the public wanted to be getting involved. Um, I think we need more compassion in wildlife management. I think that's a key missing component. I think every single animal deserves compassion. Um, I think we should increase transparency significantly, that we don't always have to do a public records request for some of the simplest questions, especially in regard to this incident. Um, I'd like to see maximum fines and penalties issued for any animal abuse, not a $250 fine, but if there's a $1,000 fine in jail, let's give it to them. I know we have one commissioner who agrees with that. And until one, one sentence, and until we can do all these, until we can value and protect our animals, I believe we should relist wolves until our state can do that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lisa. Bill Fister. President Lagwood, Director Nesbitt, commissioners, thank you for your time again. Um, I spent a lot of time as the president of the Wyoming State Traps Association and other states and dealing with a lot of predator control issues and things like that. When you go to other states that have wolf and wolf management issues, the wolf managers in those other states, they talk about how exemplary our wolf management plan is. They, they start with, with, with Montana and the exception of Wyoming because how good of a job you guys are doing on the wolf management program you have instilled in our state. There is a, a big game area where they are protected and hunted and regulated, and they get to disperse out of that big game area into the rest of the state. There are small packs all over this state. They don't get to be so big that they're depredating on anything, which keeps everything, the, the wildlife, human conflict down. Um, everything's going great. The actions of this gentleman, he needs to be hung by his toenails and beat with a, a cowboy bat or a cowboy hat. It was an awful thing that happened, but you guys have done an exemplary job of managing Wyoming's wolf population and congratulations to everything that you guys have done. Thank you for your comments. You. Jessica Garstola. Close. Mr. President, Director, Commissioners, my name is Jessica Cargella. I'm the Executive Director of Footloose Montana, and I'm also a former lawmaker for the state of Montana. But just to be clear, I'm from the side of the aisle that voted against a lot of the new wolf policy in our state. 
As I was driving here from Florence, Montana, I noticed signs along the road warning that littering is a $750 offense. It made me think the state has their priorities wrong when you only levy a fine of $250 for possession and transportation of live, warm-blooded wildlife and have what appears to be unclear policy against cruelty to wildlife like wolves. I hope you agree running over wolves and other wildlife is cruel and undignified behavior. It has brought the eyes of the world on Wyoming, so I hope the state will disincentivize it by codifying harsh penalties. The dictionary defines predator as any organism that exists by preying upon other organisms, cats or carnivorous predators, your dogs and my dogs are predators. Trust me, my dogs are feral. They look cute, but they're feral. Predator is also defined as a person or group that plunders, pillages, or robs, as in war, the Vikings were barbarian predators. I take issue with the term predator zone. It's an animal killing zone. Unless you're referring to those like Cody Roberts who brutalize, torture, and kill wolves. If that's the case, then yes, it is a predator zone. Look, I'm from rural Montana. My family has been in the state since the 1890s. I know Wyoming and Montana are different states but I implore you to take a different path. I take issue with those who say Cody Roberts was an isolated incident. He's not an anomaly. He's not the exception. Sadly, there are many like him. I've known them all my life. We all know animal abusers. Let's not embolden them with small fines and lax regulation. Thank you for your time. I appreciate you taking what I said into consideration. Thank you. Jim Keen. <clears throat> so good afternoon, commissioners, Mr. President and Mr. Director. Um, I'm a uh, agriculture veterinarian from rural South Dakota. I, I have my DVM and PhD are from University of Illinois. My PhD is in infectious diseases. I've been a large animal practitioner, a uh, faculty member at the University of Nebraska Veterinary School, and a researcher at the USD's Meat Animal Research Center in Nebraska. Um, my family continues to ranch and farm and fair chase hunt in South Dakota as I have since the 1880s. And I'm now director of uh, veterinary sciences for animal wellness action and the Center for Humanity Economy. As veterinarian and scientist, I want to emphasize four main points, if I have the time. First, to guard the tortured wolf. An independent veterinary forensic investigation should be conducted on the wolf remains to explore other abuses the, the animal may have suffered. It seems there is a consensus that police and prosecutors should preserve felony charges under the state's anti-cruelty statute. Second, rural folks and veterinarians know animals. This individual violated written and unwritten moral codes um, of responsible treatment of animals and ethical hunting. And part of any sentencing should include a permanent stripping of his hunting privileges. Third and more broadly, this case bears, um, lays bare problems with Wyoming's uh, no holds barred wolf and predator management practices. So say should consider the following practices. First, ban snowmobile hunting and as alluded to before, use of wire snares that still draw leg hold traps. Second, eliminate the current predator zone covering eight, uh, about 85% of the state. Um, please note that the structure of the existing no holds barred approach to wolf killing actually poses a threat to hunting and ranching. CWD, chronic wasting disease, is highly prevalent in Wyoming. And I, an infectious disease I studied myself is the greatest threat to Wyoming deer and elk hunters. Wyoming wolves and mountain lions selectively target and kill these deer and elk, helping to uh, keep the herds healthy. Wolves are the antidote to CWD. Um, can I have a couple more seconds? Just no. Okay. All right. Down. Thank you. <coughs> Lorraine Sinazo. Good afternoon. Hi there. Um, it's the first time I've ever done this. Um, I traveled 1800 miles to be here from South Carolina because I'm devastated uh, by what has occurred here. 
My family, my husband and my daughter are with me. We love Wyoming. Every minute we can spend in Wyoming, we are happy. It is a, a place of, be of unfathomable beauty. Um, but recently, something very ugly has occurred. The incident in Daniel, Wyoming has, is giving me nightmares. We come to see wildlife. We love wolves and grizzlies. Knowing that the state permits snowmobiles to run over animals as a wildlife management tool is appalling. It's outrageous that such a method is legally considered hunting. Unless there are changes to these laws, we can no longer support Wyoming tourism. I urge you to take the necessary steps to outlaw this barbaric practice, which only appeals to a small extreme minority in your state. We love spending time here. Um, however, this incident has tarnished the beauty. The laws must change. The world is watching. Thank you. Thank you. Linda Hilo. <clears throat> Welcome. Hey there. It's Halo, but you guys were great. That's close. Anyway, um, Halo. thank you very much um, for you all to let us come and make our comments. What I want to comment about is the fee scale for fines, and I realize that's not up to you guys, it's up to the legislature. But I agree with someone who spoke earlier that said poaching is going to happen, violations are going to happen no matter what kind of rules you make. I believe this is true. But for a fine, for something like this, I think this would hold for this and it would also hold for something in the park where people do stupid stuff, like with wildlife and walking on crusts and what have you. Um, make it $10,000. You're only going to need to find somebody once. The word's going to get around. People will respond to that. It will be outrageous, but it'll also tell them you're serious. The reason I think it should be that high is it's respect. It's respect for your agency. It's respect for Wyoming. It's respect for rules. Um, 250 bucks is not a deterrent. I mean, I think that didn't the fellow brag that he bought drinks for the bar for that amount? That's not very much money. And it used to be, but it, it's not. Um, and it also, that large amount would say you're serious about adherence. And I mean, it's radical. I understand that. But at the same time, you want, you're not making these laws for jokes. You're making these laws because you expect people to comply with them. So anyway, I think that's what you should do. And if you have any way to talk to legislators, that's a suggestion you could offer. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Jim Labora. Laborn. Laborn. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. No, no problem, sir. Uh, thank you, President, Director, Commissioners, for allowing me to speak. Um, you know, I think this uh, might not be the ideal forum about this uh, situation, but the citizens of Wyoming are looking to all of you for leadership on wildlife ethics. Now, personally, I'm a third generation Wyoming hunter. I grew up hunting. I grew up listening to my brothers and my father telling me hunting stories around around the, the table and i tell you never not one of those stories was about chasing an animal down with a motor vehicle till exhaustion about traumatizing an animal with a motorized vehicle about uh blunt trauma and concussion it was about being in good shape it was about being a sportsman it was about being a good shot it was about taking pride in um exploring the wilderness, the, the forest near you. I mean, it, hunting is a huge part of my life. My best jacket is camouflage. I mean, I, I love to hunt. I've fed myself for 40 years now on elk. And what happened down there in Daniel is just so disgusting, I can't stop thinking about it. I mean, I many hunters are worried that this incident will affect their hunting rights and their ability to hunt in the future. I'm worried about something even worse. I'm worried that if there's no change on this issue, that Wyoming hunters will forever be associated with the likes of the wolf torturer from Daniel, and I refuse to be associated with him. 
And so, I'm sorry, I've decided that I'm going to dime to the Wyoming Game and Fish until the department proposes real reform on wolf torture, until motorized killing of wildlife and uh, is banned, and there's a prominent statement that torture and brutality are a violation of hunting ethics, and they have to end. It has to end. This is not hunting. This violates the principles that I taught my nephews and nieces when I taught them how to shoot, when I taught them about, you know, um, well, you get it. You know, if you've taught another hunter, you know that it's very serious. It's not just about making a hole on paper. You know, it's about putting something down efficiently and cleanly. There's no torture. There's no suffering. That should never, ever be allowed. It is not hunting. And it, it's a disgrace. It's a disgrace to Wyoming. And it has to end. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your comments. Where's the bad guy? David Stalling. Yes, thank you. Good afternoon, uh, Director and Commissioners, President. Morning. I appreciate the opportunity. My name is Dave Stalling. I uh, am an avid hunter and angler. I grew up hunting and fishing. I uh, was the conservation editor of the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation's Bugle Magazine for 10 years, and I uh, president of the Montana Wildlife Federation. And currently, I started a new group called Hunters and Anglers for Wildlife Management Reform that's tied in with Wildlife for All to start uh, reforming wildlife management so that all citizens have a say and all species are protected because we know, and I'm an avid hunter, but us hunters have so much control over wildlife conservation and wolves. I don't think this incident, I haven't met anybody that would disagree that this incident that happened with Cody Roberts is horrific. However, we're not blameless. There is this cultured of hatred for wolves that exists through the hunting community. You see it in the magazines and in the industry and in the hunters. They despise wolves. It's an irrational hatred. They spread myths and lies about wolves. They talk about shoot, shovel, and shut up and save a hundred elk, kill a wolf. Even the better groups don't say anything about wolves. They're afraid to because they'll get bullied by the hunters who hate wolves. It's just uh, irrational. And we also, and the way we manage wolves isn't based on science, it's based on politics driven by fear, lies, misconceptions, and hate. And it violates the principles of the, uh, several principles of the uh, North American model of wildlife conservation. It's not based on science. In fact, the way we manage wolves probably exasperates the problems that we think we're solving. It's certainly, uh, uh, doesn't have a legitimate purpose as stated in the wildlife model and it violates the public trust and it looks like i'm about out of time and i appreciate you hearing me out thank you thank you yeah. jack bales bail boils bales welcome not any other four-letter word we get a lot of them no i'm not going there so first off, what Kristen said, my family immigrated to the greater Yellowstone ecosystem in 1868. We've been here for five generations, five generations of veterans, five generations of ranchers, I've been a rancher personally. Thanks for your service, Director Nesvik. Mr. Ludwig, got one too. 20 years at the local level after that, at the tip of the spear, 38 surgeries for my trouble. This is not what I signed up for. This is an abomination to civilization. It's an abomination. The personal relationship that the Wyoming Game and Fish officer had with Mr. Roberts, that they cut out Salt Lake County from the, what is very clearly a felony investigation, that's a problem, that's improper. As a peace officer, I would go to jail for doing that. I want a special prosecutor to get me to a grand jury to investigate the felony investigation under 6-3-1005, sub A, sub 2. Ban whacking. It's a blight on civilization. A blight. Ban it. Nobody in Daniel is sad. They're just sad they got caught. That's it. The amount of taunting, the amount of threats, the amount of calls for mass casualty incidents I get every time I post something about a wolf in a park, 
every day. We've had people shoot at us. We have people run us off the road. We've been assaulted. Our cars have been vandalized because the tone is set for the irrational hatred of wolves. It's unacceptable and it's time for this to be over. This will be the event and the response to the event that defines Wyoming for a generation. For a generation, this will be it. And when the billboards start going up on every road into Wyoming, this is what we do here. That's on you. So when you talk to Governor Gordon, this one needs to happen. Thanks. Thank you for your comments. Mr. President, I'm going to have to say, I'm going to have to say that I don't believe that we should degradate any officer in the Wyoming game and fish in this kind of a thing. What I believe, uh, I think that uh, it's not respectful and uh, I don't believe it should be a part of this. So it, I would hope that the uh, president would shut down any kind of degradation of the department or the officer in particular, naming out things that uh, I, I don't see a need for it. Thank you. Thank you. Mike Blissett. Afternoon, everybody. Thank you. I'm Mike Blissett. I'm speaking as a small business owner and a partner in a small business in Cody. Um, as we all know, tourism is a big industry in this state. My photography business is in Cody, and it depends on a strong tourism season to thrive. I sell more grizzly bear and wolf photo photos to tourists than all other photos combined. Those are the animals tourists come and hope to see, and those are the photos they want to take home. Like it or not, Wyoming is on a global stage at all times because of its parks and its wildlife. Every time someone in this state does something like kill a grizzly or a wolf, the entire world reacts. Truly, the world is watching with this wolf torture incident. Hashtags like ban Wyoming are a very real thing and people let their voices be heard in more ways than just on Facebook or speaking in forums like this. They also speak with their wallets. They will go elsewhere. We already heard one person say that. While a drop in tourism might not impact local ranchers and hunters, it will definitely impact me and other small business owners who depend on tourism for their livelihood, even though we had nothing to do with this incident. And a drop in tourism revenue because of this incident means a drop in sales tax revenue for the state. So then the whole state loses. I've already seen many posts online from people claiming to have canceled the trips this summer over the wolf torture incident. All of the wildlife in this state has immeasurable value for all of us, no matter where it is or how it got there or what it eats. It's in everyone's best interest to work together to find some common ground and push to make some common sense laws with harsh penalties to begin to improve Wyoming's standing in the public's eye. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody with the first name looks like Matthew Anderson. Okay. Good afternoon, Mr. President and the Commission. My name is Madhu Anderson. I'm from Rock Springs, Wyoming. I drove all the way here to attend this meeting because animal welfare issues are very important to me. Wyoming is a beautiful state, but it has one of the worst animal protection laws in the country. One of the main reasons this man in, in Daniel tortured and ridiculed the injured wolf after running him over with his snowmobile is because of lack of respect for wildlife. That mostly comes from lack of respect and lack, uh, lack of wildlife protection laws. Most people think if it's legal to run wildlife over by a snowmobile, it must be ethical and okay. Another example is I see wildlife killing contests happening in my town regularly. I watch contest participants bringing dead, bloodied animal bodies piled up at the back of their trucks to local bars for weighing and counting to win cash and prizes. Where is the respect for wildlife here? 
These wildlife killing contests teach our children that killing animals for fun is okay. One more example of Wyoming is so behind other states in animal welfare laws is we still use gas chambers to kill homeless dogs and cats in the city shelters. Green River and Amistad has gas chambers. Only two states in the country, Wyoming and Missouri, has gas chambers. It's about time for you to start taking animal cruelty cases seriously and please consider trapping reform and prohibiting wildlife killing contests in our state. Thank you. Thank you. Helen Edelson. Welcome. Good afternoon, President, Director, and Commissioners. My name is Helena Edelson. I'm a resident of Wyoming and president of Large Carnivore Fund based in Wyoming and Montana. Thank you for letting me speak today. We're all familiar with the detailed actions of Cody Roberts, but I wanted to point out just two things. First, instead of confining his actions to a singular hunting event, he exposed the animal to multiple discrete acts of beating, torturing, holding captive, transporting, and hours of trauma before killing it later. I did some subsistence hunting and fishing when I was an Alaska resident studying wolves in the interior. And what he did was not hunting and none of it was ethical treatment of our public wildlife. And second, his actions appear to follow the definition of multiple counts of felony cruelty to animals word for word under the Wyoming statute 631002 and 5. While the first and last actions could be construed as exempt from the statute, Every discrete action he took in between was otherwise prohibited by law and outside the bounds of a discrete hunting event. So we urge this commission to exercise your authority and influence on the legislature and Department of Agriculture to support new legislation preventing this pattern of abuse for animals and predator species. Outlaw running down wildlife and any animal with snowmobiles or other motor motorized vehicles. And this one I feel very strongly about permanently replace the predator zone with species-specific management units, quotas based on population monitoring, sufficient sampling, do not allow killing of wolves by any means all year long, but instead implement seasons, fall through February 1st, and require licenses. I thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Keith Nelson. Julie Godfrey. Good afternoon, President, uh, Director Nesvig, President Ladwig, Commissioners. The time has come to take decisive action through policymaking, prioritizing the outlawing of running down wildlife by motorized vehicles and implementing ethical regulations to prevent radical extremists from inflicting excruciating pain and torturing wildlife for sheer cruelty. Conservation measures must be strengthened. This includes robust enforcement of regulations, increasing penalties for those who violate ethical hunting practices and promoting responsible behaviors. It is our collective responsibility to ensure Wyoming's conservation community thrives and is a source of pride rather than su the subject of local, national, and international embarrassment. It's important that you do not stand by the misconception that what occurred in Daniel was an isolated incident. Though perhaps the most public, this cruelty does occur. Let us seize the opportunity to make a lasting impact through our commitment to enacting stronger conservation measures, promoting responsible behaviors, and holding ourselves accountable. Thank you. Thank you. Keith Nelson. I was delayed. I appreciate you having me here for this, uh, what I believe is a true form of democracy, You're being welcome. able to speak to the public officials, the director, the president, the commission, and like I said last time, to the other support. And <clears throat> this, uh, my earlier testimony revolved around the Greeks and what we call a prime mover, where you go back to the original source, the thing that moves things. And what happened in this case is just a freaking disaster. And so it's a PR disaster. And I worked in government for a chunk of my career, 40 plus years in Alaska, private sector. In the private sector, things would be moving. 
in the right direction. They'd see this disaster, react upon it in a positive way and make the changes necessary. Here I see finger pointing. It's, you know, this guy drove a snow machine through the state statutes. We've got the fish and game regs, got department of ag, can't do anything. Magically, he severed that to a $250 fine. Ridiculous. We need all hands on deck. We have the attorney general here, who's our office representative, who, you know, knows the law so we can make just penalties. They don't have to truly change the law, but as the previous uh, speaker talked, there are federal laws that you can cut and paste just the penalty portion and revise a little bit of laws, unite them, and it's an all hands on deck situation. And in, I'd just like to close in the, in the Greek analogy, at that time, over 2,000 years ago, there was another man living in the foothills of the Himalayas, Buddha. And he has four uh, vows you're supposed to repeat every day. The very first one, so, uh, sentient animals, sentient beings are numberless, meaning they're infinite, they're everywhere. I vow to protect them. That should be the, your corporate or you know, your motivation. Protect these critters. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Lori Brown. Good at the formality of introduction. Thank you all for being here. And Mr. President, thank you. Um, I am a 31-year resident of Wyoming. Um, I'm supportive of conservation ranching, holistic resource management, predator-friendly ranching, and fair chase hunting. In 1993, I testified in the federal hearing in support of the wolf reintroduction. I was idealistic at the time and excited for this keystone species to return to the greater Yellowstone ecosystem and to once again establish balance in this ecosystem. At the time, we weren't using the language of trophic cascade, the concept of bunch grazing, and the importance of the ungulates to have the pressure from the presence of this predator was well known at the time. While I was not prepared for this, the vile hatred and the insanity that the presence of this animal would bring about, what I was not prepared for, Fast forward in late February of this year, our, our, young, our young female wolf in Daniel, Wyoming was brutally chased by a snowmobile, tortured, beaten, and public, publicly mocked as she bled and was then taken out back. As this young female wolf was paraded around, terrified, dehydrated, and tortured, we all found out later, much later, and it woke all of us up. I now understand that we have a current legal climate in Wyoming that does not protect predators from such horrific acts of violence as snowmobile harassment. And I would add coyote whacking, coyote derbies, and other such abominable displays of dis disrespect toward our wild and sentient creatures. We seem to have very poor citizen representation on such matters and way too much latitude for and tolerance of such to torture and cruelty. To this commission, um, I request reform, revision of law, and a paradigm shift of significance, which protects our wild animals, predators alike, from any such happening ever again. I thank you so much for hearing my thoughts. Thank Appreciate you. Thank you. you. Jill Fritz. Welcome back. <laughs> thank you. Um, I'll be brief. Uh, I'm, my name is Jill Fritz. I'm a senior director of wildlife protection at the Humane Society of the United States. Uh, we share the grief and the anger that many expressed over what happened to the wolf uh, on February 29th. So we're joining with state organizations in urging you to use your authority and leadership to uh, ensure wildlife, including predators, are protected from these cruel and barbaric killing methods. At minimum, we ask that you work with the Department of Agriculture to exert your influence and pressure the legislature to outlaw running down wildlife and cats uh, with motorized vehicles. It's unfathomable to think of the pain, confusion, and fear that that wolf faced. Now you, as policymakers, have a responsibility to that wolf, to all Wyoming's wildlife, and to all of Wyoming's public in whose trust 
that wildlife is managed to not let it happen again. So thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Melissa Fitzgerald. Welcome. President, commissioners, director, thank you for this opportunity. The anguish I feel for the torture and inhumane death of this Daniel Wyoming wolf is all encompassing. Clearly, I'm not alone. The anguish and pain that you have received through verbal communication since the story broke is because there's a very large group of concerned citizens who are repelled and sickened by animal cruelty. Nothing, no thing, should die the tragic death that this wolf did. Your mission clearly states that you will conserve, enhance, and protect Wyoming's exceptional fish and wildlife. I ask for you to protect our wildlife by working with legislature to make whacking of all wildlife illegal. Let me be clear, whacking of all wildlife illegal regardless of whether that animal is classified as an apex predator. I know Wyoming as a whole is better than the recent actions which have tarnished its reputation. Now is your opportunity to repair that reputation by proving to be the gold standard in wildlife management by opposing whacking. The greatness of a nation and its moral progress can be judged by the way its animals are treated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amy Gerber. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Commission, for hearing me and all these other folks today. My name is Amy Gerber. Uh, I live in Cody, Wyoming, and I am a retired high school biology teacher and now a wildlife photographer and guide. Uh, I'm also a Wyoming Wildlife Advocate Board member. When I came to Wyoming over 30 years ago, I loved the Wyoming Game and Fish motto, Wyoming Wildlife Worth the Watching. And I love all wildlife. My friends and family can certainly attest to that. I particularly love and photographing grizzly bears and wolves. And I'm curious as to why Wyoming Game and Fish, or so it seems to me anyway, uh, doesn't consider predators to be part of the wildlife tapestry here. Uh, <clears throat> when I first came to Wyoming, I naively believed that Wyoming has or was this place where people abided by the motto, live and let live. I naively believe that Wyoming Game and Fish motto, Wyoming Wildlife Worth the Watching. Your motto now reads, conserving wildlife and serving people, but I'm having a hard time buying it because it seems to only apply to some wildlife, for example, game, uh, and some people, specifically hunters. It's time for a cultural shift. The antiquated mindset that vilifies predators is no longer acceptable by the masses. I refuse as a Wyomingite to support these outdated notions. Can change come to Wyoming? A decade ago, I spent a month in Namibia, Africa, learning how local ranchers there lived with predators like cheetahs and other big cats. The changes that the Cheetah Conservation Fund was trying to instill involve conviction, commitment, and a speck of courage. And though it's a work in progress, the seeds of change are sprouting and coexistence has been proven to work. There are non-lethal ways to coexist with predators. In Namibia, it involved intensive education campaigns, a guard dog program, and lots of support to local farmers and ranchers. If Namibia can do it, we certainly can too. So I kindly ask you, stand up against the misinformation spread. Uh, I'm just gonna finish this and I obviously had a lot more to say, but I'll send it to you. Um, the reckless misinformation spread by hunters and ranchers, uh, not anti-hunting husband, many close friends are passionate hunters. Uh, we just need stricter laws and steeper punishments for people who carelessly and unethically proceed. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, yeah. um, a reminder uh, for Amy and, and any of those that, that are making good comments that, that run out of time, please be sure to submit those written comments. We will get to see those. Right. 
Thank you. Jocelyn Stoker. Hey, President, thank you so much for having me. Oh, my throat's getting dry back there. Um, I just have a couple of things to say. I didn't write anything down, but A, our apex predators are not only wildlife and should not only be classified as wildlife, but are amongst one of the most critical members of our ecosystem that keep all of us alive and healthy and well. And the whole world is now looking at us to see how we're going to actually protect our apex predators in a sustainable and thoughtful, ethical, moral way. And, uh, you know, these wolves and grizzly bears are some of the most prized animals for people coming from all over the country, all over the world to come and see. They are probably the biggest income generators for our state. They're bringing in over $1.5 billion um, in revenue for people to come and share and celebrate these wildlife. So we absolutely need to amend our policies to protect wolves and all other quote unquote, you know, predators to be able to say that we are upholding this gold standard in wildlife management, because as of now, that is not the case. And it makes many of us very, very upset and traumatized and um, speaking from someone who spends most of their time with people coming from all over the world to see our incredible wildlife as a guide in the national parks i urge you to really take this seriously this is not a one-time thing this has been happening it's going to continue to happen if we don't address it properly and really take it seriously you know, people treating our wildlife like this absolutely need to be punished. Thank you. Thank you. Casey York. Good afternoon again. I'm Casey York out of, um, with Trap Free Montana. Do we definitely know if this wolf was killed by gunshot? If so, then would that be, wouldn't that be illegal to, fought, to discharge a firearm in town? If he and maybe others bludgeoned her to death, as we're hearing, well, under Wyoming law, that would be legal. Because she's classified a predator, animal cruelty and torture can be done to a predator. Yet, we too are predators. People cannot run over each other with snowmobiles, injure, capture, bound their mouths shut, and torment them as a helpless public spectacle. The condoning of abuse against wildlife sets a dangerous precedent and for all. In my work in the mental health field with children, a child who was cruel to animals was a huge red, red flag, likely was desensitized to violence and lacked guilt or remorse. Cruelty to animals is considered one of these symptoms, three symptoms that predict the development of a psychopath. People who are capable of such inhumane acts have a severely underdeveloped sense of empathy. They lack the ability to comprehend or care about the distress or agony they are causing. The FBI now tracks offenses of animal cruelty. Numerous studies show the relationship of animal abuse to violence against humans. What happened to this wolf was a violent act in the past. Had wolves been relisted, this $250 fine would have been up to $50,000 a year in prison and loss of his snowmobile. It's the maltreatment that contributes and reinforces our position in a recently filed lawsuit to relist wolves. In Montana, FWP brings forth bills to the legislature. Why can't FWP do that here? The governor and these atrocities get wolves and other predators under fish and game and treat them these sent sentient beings with respect, honor, and support their rightful role in the ecosystem. The mismanagement of wildlife is against the public trust. You can do better. You've gone under the radar a long time. Now you're not. Thank you. Mark Cook. Good 
Director, President, and Commission members, my name is Mark Cook, and I'm with Wolves the Rockies. <laughs> it's not my intent to incite or inflame anybody in this room. Past and present Wyoming governors, legislators, directors of Wyoming Game and Fish, Game and, Confi Game and Fish Commission have set the stage with past legislation and policies for which recently led to and happened at the Green River Bar by wildlife terrorist Cody Roberts. By the way, just for the record, everybody's trying to get grizzly bears delisted. Cody Roberts just reset the clock. So it doesn't serve you well to ignore this. Very few individuals get caught the first time they perform an illegal action. Poaching and wildlife abuse is alive, not only in Wyoming, but Montana and Idaho. As commissioners, you have a responsibility to prevent this type of abusive behavior. It's way past time that this agency, this director, this commission started listening to and including the non-consumptive community in wildlife management. In other words, we demand wildlife agency reform. There is no room in the ethical fair chase doctrine to support the manner in which this wolf, other wolves and carnivores are treated. Running over wildlife with snow, uh, running over wildlife with snow machines is evil and barbaric to say the least. The silence is deafening. Wolves of the Rockies is committed to collaborating, uh, a collaborative approach. We would like to work with the game and fish in future wildlife management as public trust doctrine dictates that wildlife belongs to everyone, not just the consumptive community. Let's find common ground, work together for the betterment of our wildlife. Wolves of the Rockies is not going away. We're committed to this. Please do what's right for our wildlife, our non-consumptive community, and avoid litigation. And lastly, I'd like to close on a good note. Commissioner Brokaw, thank you for your comments and support and hopefully energy to bring about change and up the fines and the punishment with wildlife abuse. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Donald O'Toole. Mr. President, uh, members of the commission, uh, I fear you're getting weary. I do have a request, and my request is this, and I'm repeating what somebody else had said. Um, so it's a question, has the Wyoming Game and Fish Department retrieved this wolf's carcass, intact carcass, or whatever is left of the wolf? If so, I think a post-mortem should be done to determine the extent of that wolf's traumatic injuries and to establish the immediate cause of death, particularly when the animal died by gunshot. From press descriptions, it, appear the wolf, it appears that the wolf was dying when put on public display in dead. If a forensic post-mortem is done by a board-certified pathologist, which is my, my uh, career from which I recently retired, under chain of custody, I request that the results be made public so that folks know what's going on. Years ago, when I was working in the Wyoming State Vet Lab, I casually asked a colleague at my place of work uh, what he was going to do that weekend. He said he was going to go coyote mashing. I didn't know what that was, and I asked him. And he told me it involved chasing coyotes using a snowmobile and running over them to kill them. It's what he did every weekend. Well, not every weekend. He did it many weekends. I do not believe that is a rare activity in this state, just as I don't believe that uh, 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 coyote hunting competitions are rare or that misting prairie dogs are rare. I think we have a cultural problem. The cultural problem is if you can't eat it, it's okay to hunt it down and be and behave in a cruel manner. I ask that uh, uh, years ago, Oscar Wilde once said that uh, traditional fox hunting was, was the unspeakable in pursuit of the inedible. I ask you to deal with the unspeakable. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Do we stop this at the two hours? Okay. I think that's all for the personal in the room comments. Uh, I want to thank you all for your comments. We're going into some Zoom comments. I think these.